All right, we get the lines out. Dude, That's look at awesome. that thing. It should be nasty. Oh my god. Gone. No way, we just lost your rod. Got your line, dude. <laughs> Our viewers up north who don't know what Brahms is, it's perhaps the best fast food cheeseburger you can get in the south. <laughs> And it's so weird because like you wouldn't know until you're here doing it that you would forget about all that. Because yeah. I haven't thought about any of those things since I got out here. Today's bait is Southwest style seasoned chicken. It's stinky as hell. It's disgusting to use. It's old. This is definitely one of the least fun parts of catfishing. Funny thing is I'm doing this while my wife is cooking me breakfast like five feet away. She's not super stoked. I think that's apparent. But yeah, we got chicken, disinfectant wipes, and some paper towels. Catfish and bullhead, and hopefully channel. The, the bulls definitely come in and steal some bait. But since there's not much variety, there's a little bit of rock over here. We've had some luck yet that I think kind of uh, goes out a little bit, kind of a peninsula. But other than that, it's all just about the same depth. That's fish. Uh, I try to get this line as tight as I can without moving the bait on the bottom. We had a bite on uh, this white pole that's cast off the rocks. Moved the line in really far. Might have spit it out. Uh, didn't even have a chance for a hook set, but it's a good sign. So a lot of people have different theories about catfishing. I think it's pretty commonly accepted that night catfishing is the best. There's also a, you know, a large amount of people that think in the winter that it's actually better to catfish when the day is actually heating up until it's it's hottest and then apparently the fishing kind of falls off i don't know if that's been my experience but that's what we're uh that's the theory we're testing out today it's the beginning of january so it's not ideal fishing but we'll see what we can do bobby's out in the water trying the uh trying to fly out today it's extremely windy so it's a uh, kind of a crappy time to cast a fly we're, we're putting everything out there we're putting it all on the line today we're trying everything so Stay tuned. All right, we've been out here four hours, I think, yeah. right at four, and uh, we've been skunked. Sun's been out though. It's been a pretty, pretty nice day. But uh, yeah, we're about to we're about to turn things around though. Dude, crappie <laughs> on the fly. Hell oh, yeah, black dude. woolly bugger. Dude, that's look at awesome. that thing. You see like the purple iridescence? Yeah, that's that's awesome. In the sunlight. We're on our way out. We've already packed up everything. Let's let's throw three casts right here after we've hiked a little bit. Didn't get skunked. <laughs> This is day two of the catfish conquest. Um, I just got to another pond. We're not giving up on the on the other one, the first one that we fished. But hopefully this pond is kind of like the get us back in the groove of things. Maybe we, I'm, I'm hoping, I don't want to curse it, that we can catch some catfish here. Kind of get back on our feet, go back to the other pond with vengeance. 
and catch some channel cats there. All right, we get the lines out. We got sneak bait on uh, the far left one, and then we got a worm on a small hook, worm on a big hook. Yeah, hopefully we can get some action. After getting skunked, it's tough to just sit and wait and hope you don't get skunked again. Start playing mind games, but we'll see what happens. Nice. First one of the day, first one in a while. Day two, not skunked. Those guys can actually crawl across bridges if the, the water level gets low or something and they need to get to a deeper pool. So that's uh, one for night crawler, zero for stink bait. Let's freaking go. Night crawlers, two. Bobby, you better hurry, I'm gonna catch them all. I am, uh, I'm switching the stink bait off. I'm not getting any action with it. I'll put a night crawler on this one too. And I've been catching those cats and they're good size cats. I've just been catching them on that huge pole. And I'm gonna catch them on this bait caster. Uh, this pole's just a lot more responsive. It'll feel more like a fight, and I won't just be dominating these fish if I keep catching that same size, which again is a good size. We've got three poles out. This one, the old tiger, I found in my brother's RV, but we call it Whitey. It doesn't matter, the Whitey is getting 10 fish. The other three poles might get like zero fish. And it just, it just holds up. It gets the job done. Fish love it. And it reels like shit. <laughs> but it does a little bit. Not until you get really shallow into your line, like towards the tip. It's it's tried and true. Legend of the Whitey. Legend of Whitey. <laughs> oh, no. Dude, there was a fish on, right? Yeah. go up Big it. Uh, and there folks is why you don't balance your tackle on your tackle bag the pain <laughs> <laughs> um, just fun activities here on the on the bank you know we've got like three tonight I think yep that's what's great about catfishing though is you get set up might be a little nasty getting set up depending on what you're using Probably yeah. nasty. Most of the things we use are nasty. It should be nasty. Oh my god. Dude, which one is it? Where's the bait caster? Gone. Fuck. No way. We just lost your rod to a catfish. Dude, yeah. We do. Alright. So that was, uh, that was pretty nuts. <laughs> that was absurd. <laughs> Can't get comfortable out here. Yeah, we hadn't had a hit in like 20 minutes. It was there and then it wasn't. <laughs> Lived in the pond for like 10 minutes. Yeah. Bobby drug bottom. Yeah, we trolled the bottom and snagged into the rod. 
Got your line, dude. No way. Dude. <laughs> 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 Can we get that? Can we cut this? Look at, oh my gosh. Dude. We get my pole back. You get on the board. That's <laughs> freaking go. Let's go, baby. That's a good fish. Super pretty. Nice. Fat, too. I think before we got up, we were talking about what we like about catfishing. <laughs> yeah. And you could just, you're just chilling, but there's, you know, we sit down to talk. You could be drinking a beer, listening to music, whatever. Something cool can happen. Something really cool. When we were getting skunked the first day, it was still sunny and we were still able to, able to be outside somewhat yeah. comfortable for six hours in yeah. January. It was a great day. Just Saw some cool wildlife many, and- Not many fish. Yeah, not many, except the- Except, except the crappie. The, numbers, baby. Nah, it was awesome, dude. Let's go. Day three, Bobby and I are back out here. Hey guys, I'm Bobby. Now nah, this is our buddy Gage. Uh, we've been fishing for years. He's a hell of a fisherman, great guy. Uh, <laughs> we're back at the same pond as day one, and this time we're uh, we're pissed off. We're back for vengeance. We're not gonna get skunked tonight. It's a little bit colder tonight. Got some stuff to warm us up a little bit. Got this in Mexico. Flash the picture of the marlin I got. <laughs> it's an Oklahoma marlin. We're gonna we're gonna get a fire going and uh, just kick it. All right, viewers at home, if you don't know how to build a fire, there's a couple things you're gonna need. You're gonna need tinder. You're gonna need an empty Brahms bag. For those of you, our viewers up north, who don't know what Brahms is, it's perhaps the best fast food cheeseburger you can get in the south. <laughs> if you don't agree, I mean, hop in the comment section and let me know. I have no, t I'm gonna tension my line and just gonna. There we go. Dude, nice. You broke the skunk. What's up, guys? It's me, it's Bobby. Uh, this is Ian said it is a bullhead. Bullhead catfish. <laughs> this is actually my first bullhead. Oh, really? Uh huh. Like uh, earlier in the video, we were grabbing channels. Uh huh by their mouths, but if you grab a bullhead, they'll clamp down on you, get you. and tear you up. See, bud? <laughs> yeah, he's on there. Nice, another bull. Listen to him. All right, buddy. There we go. Killing him, dude. So we uh we broke we broke the skunk. Gage broke the skunk. Yeah, that was that was actually my first bull. Um, caught two of them tonight. They're really cool. So you were telling me that they don't get very big. I want to say that like the record is like two or three pounds. Then like on average, these things are like a pound or less. So you heard it here, like I came really close to breaking the state record tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I swear that last one almost broke my line, dude. Dude, it almost broke your heart. I mean, everybody saw that kiss. <laughs> we're hoping to hook up on a channel, but if we don't, we're, uh, we're happy. I think we got... Yep. Little bullhead. Oh yeah, got me with those prongs. With these, these things are like needles. And this is a needle, this is a needle. It's a pretty fish. Oh, wrong way. Yeah, he likes you. Get out of here. <laughs> there he goes. 
I showed my grandpa my tackle box the other day, and it's this uh, Plano brand. Well, I was like my grandpa, he said, ain't nothing special about it, it's just Plano tackle box. <laughs> For there to be nothing else within a world of distractions and work, everything like that, and to, and to just break it down to two things, for those two things to be at the center of your focus. I wanna stay warm and I wanna catch fish. It's like, this is it. I'm not worried about whatever I'm stressing about, whatever yeah. I have anxiety about, big project coming up that I have at work, my relationship with so-and-so. I wanna stay warm and I wanna catch fish. And it's so weird, cause like you wouldn't know until you're here doing it that you would forget about all that. Because yeah. I haven't thought about any of those things since I got out of here.